Okay guys, so as you know, I've been working on my Cap America. Um, this one is from Special STLs, which is a group funding page that's run by a guy called Eduardo. Uh, the STL only ended up costing me about 20 quid, but because we get about 15 or 20 backers, it works similarly to the way that 3D Junkies works. So he's about 512 mil tall. And as you can see, he's printed all the way around with my very sophisticated turntable that I operate with my foot. Um, I'm pretty happy with how the paint job turned out for him and for the base, it's not bad. The flag was hard. So this is a classic example of when a designer designs something for the aesthetic, but doesn't necessarily think about how the execution needs to, needs to happen. So that flag is actually completely blank when it prints. That is all 3D printed, by the way, that, that, that flag, that's solid, and then this, this all prints as one as well. Um, it's completely blank. So there's no guidelines, there's no, it doesn't emboss any of the stripes or the stars or anything like that. Originally, I was gonna try doing a decal, um, that did not work. So again, because of the amount, because because this is designed and not real, um, it's actually not it's actually not rectangular. So this edge is longer than this edge, and the amount of drop that goes there isn't the same as the drop that goes along there. And the creases made it just made it impossible to try and do a decal for it. The decal was too big, kept scrunching up. So then the next plan was to paint the start the, the, the stripes and the blue and do decals for the stars. Um, now the way I was doing my decals was with, um, was with, the, with, with, with the decal printer paper. Uh, I've never done it before, that was super hard as well. If I was doing it again, I would cut some star sponges and use them like stencils to go over. Um, I'm pretty happy with how Cap turned out. So, um, I mean, the print quality is pretty good. The paint job isn't terrible for me. Um, it's not up to Mike's standards, uh, the, the stuff that he does on his, but I'm pretty happy with how he looks. Um, there's a few bits that I could probably do with going back and touching up, but, uh, but I'm, I'm happy with him for now. One thing I will say is, so this has been obviously cut and keyed so the arms and hands and feet are separate as well as the head and then the torso and the legs are separate from each other now i've had a lot of models that have been split and keyed the problem that i have every single time is the key is the same size as the hull it doesn't allow for the fact that you prime the whole model so there's going to be a layer of primer. It doesn't allow for the fact that there's glue that needs to go in there. And it doesn't seem to allow the fact that the peg needs to go in there and that there is a degree of tolerance between the two. So I don't think I've ever had something that's been split and keyed and those keys have actually gone together perfectly after everything's glued together. It just always seems like they're, they're off even a couple of millimetres. And to me, it does spoil some of the aesthetic. But that being said, he's quite, I say he's 512 tall. I don't know how wide he is. He's probably the largest model I've ever done. And as a result, he has to live on my, on my desk because there's literally nowhere else to put him. There's my Batman for reference. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how he turned out. But thoughts and comments in the comments section. See what you think, say what you like, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Got a few other bits on. Um, so the next project is a silver surfer, which I've done the surfboard for, and I've done the torso for, oh, which I've also dropped the torso for, and the torso for. So this one I'm gonna be doing, uh, I'm gonna be using some of the XTC 3D Gloop that goes over the top of PLA, that's supposed to give you a really, like an injection molded level of, um, of, of finish. Now, if that works, 
I'm gonna be spraying him silver to try and give him um, to try and give him that uh, that sort of silver surfer look. I'm gonna try and chrome him. The problem with chrome paints is one: most chrome paints paints that are advertised as chrome aren't chrome at all. What they are is silver, um, and they can come out quite matte. And if you have um, if you have a surface with layer lines it's not perfectly smooth then it wrecks the mirror finish anyway so we'll wait until most of the rest of silver surface should be done today anyway because they're fairly small prints um you know they're not it's not it's not going to be massive i'll clean them all up i'm still waiting for the xtc to turn up and then uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll see how that one goes over on the taz uh i picked up some new filament from Filoprint, this sort of olive. It's got sort of a bit of a texture to it. It's still PLA. Um, so I'm interested to see how this turns out. This is an Ifrit model. Um, it's like a, like a fire demon from D&D &D or something. Just a miniature that I saw that I thought would be really cool. So, uh, so I'm printing that as a little four hour print. So we'll see how that does. At the moment, I mean, I've only really just started it, but at the moment, it's looking quite nice. But we'll see. Cheers for watching.